Hello, this is Pastor Jay, and I want to give you a word of wisdom to consider today. Somebody asked me, Pastor, how do you sleep so well with so much going on? And I thought about it. And me and one of my good friends talk about this all the time. The day I realized that I don't run anything, that God is sovereign, I was able to get rest at night. Because whatever God has given me to have some control over, I'm just a steward. He is still the sovereign God. So think about it. The day you're willing to let God be God and let him be sovereign in your life and be a good steward over what he's given you and understand that's a privilege, not a right, that you can go to sleep at night because he's in control of everything. Think about this. This is Pastor Jay. Like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you on the other side. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to Monday Morning Conversation with Pastor Jay and T. Drake. Grab your coffee, tea, or milk, and let's talk about the topic for today. Let's get the conversation going. All right, everyone. We will be getting ready in just a minute. Pastor Jay is going to come over here, and we are going to chat. So as soon as he gets here, we will be getting right into our discussion today. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I always look forward to when we have our chats because they're always so good. They are always spicy. So that's why I put some fire because it's going to be hot. <laughs> it's at least I. Have. So he'll be over here in a second. And when he comes, I guess he will come on it. So hopefully he can get here. So when he does come up, for those of you who know, I will send him some stuff. See if it will come on up. He should be here momentarily. So uh, we're gonna be talking about some topic that I'm kind of excited about anyway, because we always talk about puffing season and we always talk about different types of things and since we're kind of still in that realm uh we kind of just really just got through with coffee season but it still goes on right it's only more prevalent during the holiday season and we just finished what our last holiday was a major one of love time was valentine's day so normally if you got through there and you haven't been cuffed you're good (laughs) so i'm like yeah Uh, normally I'm always looking for that and there are some things that I hear and things that I get to explore because I go on the chat line sometimes and just the stuff that you hear is like it's wild I'm like what the so I'll see because he he should be here shortly but uh, just being on there and just hearing how things kind of change with what people expect from each other sometimes it there's no decorum there's no civility people just i don't know i don't know if the pandemic had anything to do with it or it's just that way but there's certain places you just wonder what's going on you know what what is happening so okay so i have pastor jay he's coming on board and we will get into this chitty chat today Hey, Pastor Jay, how are you? Hey, T, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Great. Great, 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 (laughs) great, great. So it's time for us to have our little chit chat (laughs) for the people. Hey, hello, you wonderful wisdom people. I've enjoyed listening to the cornucopia of ideas and thoughts. And now you get to listen to us. Uh, so, T, what's been going on with you? How's everything going? Everything's going good. Are we? Are we just? We're just doing our light banter. Or are we really just jumping in full throttle? Well, whatever you, whichever way you want to go, I'm on your side of this. Whatever you throw at me, you know I'm gonna have a comeback. So, where you want to start? <laughs> okay. Well, let's just start with. Let's just start with lines, dating lines. How about that? Can we start with that? Say it again. Dating lines. You know, a line that someone might give someone. Oh, the chat lines. No. Well, yes, but. Dating lines. That, the chat line, but how? 
Go ahead. Oh, the lines that people use to try to hook people. There you go. Yes, the dating lines. Yes, because I oh. I wanted to. Yeah. So oh, I wanted to yeah. know. I wanted to know how you feel about asking a woman to call you Big Daddy if you've only known her like a day or two. How do you feel about that line? Well, I mean, think about it. I mean, that's I mean, that's how archaic we're becoming. I mean, to sit there and talk to a young lady, a woman, young a woman of any stature. And a man sits back and, and demands or even suggests that you call him Big Daddy after just mm. knowing him for a couple of days and talking to him is one disrespectful. It's disrespectful. And it's also a mechanism to try to see how well he can control you to get you to call him what you want, a dominating thing, Big Daddy. Think about it. All the implications in your mind, Big Daddy, what does that mean to you? Does that, does that mean a big phallic symbol? Does that mean uh like he has this emotional mental physical control over you and that's what you're supposed to call him um again i think that's a total disrespect on many different levels for women in general and i think it's it's part of that weird game of i have to see how i can manipulate you to address me in a way that's uplifting to me or dominating, domineering for my position over you. So call me Big Daddy, just not Daddy. Just call me Big Daddy. And and again, when a woman checks him on that, then he goes to the oh, I'm just playing. It's just humor. Uh, and now it forms into total manipulation and gaslighting because now that I've checked you on. No, I just met you. There's no reason I'm going to call you that. I may not ever call you that. And if that's what you're requiring me, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to demean myself by calling you Big Daddy. I'm not going to give you that kind of mental power over me to whereas that's going to be my word for you. And I barely know your name. I mean, the audacity, I barely know your government name, you know, hmm. and you're going to uh, insist because you believe that I am that gullible that I will start calling you Big Daddy. That doesn't make any sense. That's just disrespectful. Yeah, that that line is is disrespectful, and and the, and the multitude of things, uh, it, it can go both ways. That are, and we're talking about men right now, use on women, such as um, for Christian women especially, and you know, uh, for Christian women because that's normally the women that that I find that are trying to date, mm -hmm. and they have a hard time. Uh, uh, navigating that space between their faith and their flesh. Right. Okay. There's there's no imagination in my mind that this constant war between our faith and our flesh goes on. And for a woman who's trying to date, it's like magnified to the hundredth degree because society and this culture sets these timelines, these limits on your viability as a woman. And now you have this faith thing going to put on top of that and they're clashing with each other. And now you get approached and these men, when you say you're a Christian woman <laughs> and, and, and these men, because what happened, well, let me back up. Let me, let me start all over again. Normally when a woman comes to me and she's been dating a single woman, and I just simply ask her about the guy she's dating. No, no real, it, no, no real inquiry yet. Just hey, uh, you're dating so and so, or she comes to me and tells me. I don't ask. They come to me and tell me as a pastor or someone they trust, and they say, "Hey, I'm dating so and so." First thing I ask them: Do they believe in Jesus Christ? Now, normally, what happens is the conversation goes like this: "Well, yeah, 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 he believes in God," and that's a red flag for me because. She's willing to accept that general term God as he believes in the Jesus Christ that she believes in. She's a she's a Holy Ghost filled, blood bought saint. She's trying to date. She's found someone that she's physically and maybe mentally attracted to. And she says, I'm a Christian. And he says, oh, I'm a Christian, too. Well, this is 2024. Just because you say that doesn't mean that you are that. In America, we, we've made everybody a Christian, and that's not everybody's not a Christian. 
Everybody hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior for the remission of their sins. You know, you got Jesus, the Christian candy man. You got Jesus, the, the, the God that wants you to be healthy, wealthy, and, and wise. You got the Jesus who's the Santa Claus Jesus. He got the, you got a Jesus who's basically your cosmic bellhop. But that's not the, the Bible Christian. That's not the Christian. No, that's not the Jesus of the Bible. Uh, that's not who he is. He he dealt with sin. Uh, he didn't deal with economic conditions because there's nobody in the Bible that Jesus dealt with during the time he was here that he changed their economic status. And when Paul and, and the rest of the apostles were walking the earth, they didn't change economic st status. But I digress a little bit. Let me go on with this. So, so he said she comes. She said he's a god. He's a he believes in God. Okay, mm -hmm. what God? Which God? You know, tell me about God. And you know, you had an experience recently where God said he believed in that he was a Christian, right? Right. And normally I tell the woman to ask the next question. If he says he's a Christian. He, I say, ask what his favorite scripture is. Now it's kind of, it, kind of amazing because I think I should be a guru behind this. I tell every woman mm -hmm. who comes to me who says that a person believes in God, I say, he knows about Christian women and he knows a little bit about the Bible. I bet a, a ninety-nine out of a hundred times, he's going to say his favorite scripture is John three sixteen. He's going to say that. He's going to say his favorite scripture is John 3.16. And Tanika, you just had experience with that. Is it not true? It is, but I wanted you to also tell about the other thing that the person would say along with that, oh. that, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, that what? That when when did they start believing in Jesus? Oh, like, oh, what, yeah, you know that too. John 3.16, uh -huh. and <laughs> they got baptized at 12 or 13. Yeah. You asked about their church experience. You asked about their salvation experience. So you got a fact that they said they're Christians. You found out their favorite scripture is John 3, 16. Okay. Or Psalm 23. And mm -hmm. then you asked them about their Christian experience. Ladies, ask them about their Christian experience. Because that'll tell you a lot. Because what you're going to hear next is this. I got baptized at 12 or 13. And, they're, and, and, and they relate their baptism at the church as a Christian experience of saying they're saved. Well, you can't be that ignorant to know that you could get baptized in the church and still be not saved, like most 12 and 13 year olds. They're doing what religion says. They're doing what they've seen done. They're doing what their church requires. That doesn't mean that they come to the point where they understand they need a savior and that they're a sinner and that they're going to bust hell wide open if they don't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Baptism doesn't save. Water baptism doesn't save. OK, but in church, you know, you're a 13 year old. You're just doing what everybody else is doing. I did it. You know, but that's not your Christian experience because you're talking to a grown man. Now you talk to maybe a 50 year old man, a 40 year old man. But he knows to say that to Christian women that gets, you know, he says that and that's your, every time they bring up any man that brings up John 316 is his favorite passage. Your radar should go up even more. OK, your radar should go up anytime a man says. You ask about his Christian experience with salvation and he doesn't talk about sin at all. And he goes straight to this. I got baptized when I was 12 and 13. I'm all I'm, I'm willing to bet you after that, there's going to be no connection to from 13 to 50, from 13 to 30, from 13 to 40. You're not going to have a story of this, but he's going to tell about a church that he went to. But you're not going to mm. see any intimate connection to the church. Right. You know, and then he's going to jump. Now, he said all the he said all the things that, you, that you're supposed to accept. And a lot of times because of your flesh, because you're lonely, you accept these little things that he said. These things that are very insignificant. They sound good because they have Jesus in it. They have God in it. They have a scripture in it. Uh, they have baptism in it. But there's no real relationship with the church. And then if you really want to go ask him what church did he get baptized in, you might get a hesitation because he might never have been baptized and he might have forgotten because he's never done anything since then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you go ahead to ask him about his, 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 his link to church now. Well, a lot of times what they do is they'll just adapt the, the, the conversation of, oh, well, I go to a church that has three or four services. Again, what does that say about the church? That doesn't that doesn't that doesn't do anything. They have a hundred services. What does that do? What does that prove? Mm -hmm. Well, he believes in God. Now remember, 
they're explaining to me why they should date this guy. Okay. I'm not really inquiring, but that asking, you know, questions lightly, but they know that they feel something conscious in them tells them that they need to come with what he gave them. And when they give the answers that they've been given, all you got to do is look at them and say, is that enough? Is this is because the Bible commands us not to be unevenly yoked. And there's so many ladies in the body of Christ who hook up with guys because of all the things I said about culture, because of all the things I said about society and a particular culture that you're in. Economic, socially, politically, uh, what you're in, racially, what you're in will have different pressures on you. And what I found is, is that uh, a lot of ladies in the African-American culture, uh, uh, again, because of the lack of, of godly men. Will settle. I don't mean. I mean Christian godly men. I'm not these guys who call themselves. They believe in God. They'll settle for this. And this dude is really just setting them up. He's setting them up because he's saying all the things that 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 tickles her ears. But there's something in her to whereas she knows. But you know what? I'm lonely. It's cuffing season or not, and I want to hook up with somebody because quote unquote time is running out. So you end up hooking up with this guy who's marginally, and what he does, he'll come to church with you. Oh, I mean, I, 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 these are things I've witnessed. He comes to church with you on a on, on a regular basis until he gets you. You marry him, you know, and then all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, nothing has happened to him at church. He stops coming. He slows down. So even in our church, we have a, a church full of married women. And some widows, but you can't tell because their husbands are not with them, or their husbands come sparingly, and it's nothing that the church has done to them. It's it's nothing. You know, we're not a money oriented church. They can't say that. None of that. None of that has been has been put upon them that they use. But they got what they wanted. They got the woman. And think about this, T. This man who portrays this, who puts on the chameleon, mm-hmm. who puts puts on the mask of their saved. He knows what he's getting. What is he getting? An honest woman, a trustworthy woman, a loyal woman, a woman who's willing to go to bat against her own faith to be with you. Who ends up with the better deal of the deal? Wouldn't it be worth? Wouldn't it be worth to play the game to get this woman? To to trick this woman? Because. I can trust her even in my mess because once she makes a vow to me, she takes her vow to God so seriously, she will never leave me. No matter what I do. So really, you're like that bar of gold. You Christian women are like that bar of gold or that or the unicorn or or that 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 entity that is so magnificent that if they can get you. They're going to try to get you and they're going to try to trick you with these little tricks and these little lines that that in your spirit, you know, they're not saved. Come on, Mm -hmm. you know, they're not saved. And then you have the mistake of thinking this. You take the passage where it talks about you may save your husband. That doesn't mean what you think it means. And I don't have time to unpack that scripture. But Mm -hmm. if you take that scripture, make that a doctrine for you to pick bad men. You will always end up with a bad man. And I haven't met a woman yet that has converted their husband. I haven't met one yet. Now, I'm not saying there's not any. But he got you now. You take your vow seriously. You're not going nowhere. And then he eventually doesn't come to church. And then a lot of times when this is happening is because you're so in. In, in tune with him, and you still dealing with your flesh when it comes to your worship at times, you'll start drifting too. Mm-hmm. You won't go as much. Or when you come, you feel so alone because you can't get happy about what's happening at church because at some point he begins to ban even the celebration of God at your house. 
and he might have moved in with you, but you've made him the head of the house. So when you so you had a good time at church, you feeling real good. The sermon was good. The fellowship was high. The praise, the, the prayer, all of that was high. And you turn onto your block. And I've had women tell me this. They turn onto their block. They got their church music going. And as they get closer and closer to their driveway, they turn everything down. And then when they walk into the house, that, that smile that they had, that joy that they had, they have to turn it off and turn it to a, a mediocre uh, a, a frown. And he says, how was church? And you go like, okay, you can't even celebrate the Lord in your own home. You can't even pray in your own home out loud. You can't worship God in your home because he's not going to allow it because he got you now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's well, it. That's, well, well, like you were saying, it's after talking to you, I would have wish I would have known you earlier, but here we are. But <laughs> so some of these things I would have really have loved to know ahead of time because some of these things that you're talking about that we discuss on coffee seats that we discussed for a few years now, these would have been very good to know for myself. But now that I am aware, you know, when I hear this stuff, it's just like, okay, whatever line or game this person is trying to pull, it's not going to work for me because when you listen to a person they're when they say stuff, they think you're not listening or you're not paying attention but just like the gentleman I told you about that I was talking to on the chat line, when you use a certain word to uh, explain something that you have a hard time dealing with, using the word, because we know sin is sin and there's certain things that are sin, like sexual fornication and, and sexual immorality is a sin, sinful behavior, sinful acts. But to say sin is on the level of being a demon those are two stark different things. And when somebody does it, it's almost like they don't understand what they're saying, that I still have demons, which is lust. And you try to transfer mm -hmm. that and say, a demon is your sin. They're not the same. <laughs> they're not They're not the same, but the first categorizing like they're the same. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's like, that's like bananas and apples. They are their fruit, but they're not the same. I right. Mean, to sit there and say that your your own personal lust, the Bible says there's no sin that's uncommon to man, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. And demons are a whole different category. Okay? Mm -hmm. And and when you take your responsibility for your sin and blame it on a demon, think think how think how insidious that is. You're that's lying crazy. on a demon. <laughs> that's awful. That's horrible. You're actually lying. I mean, you're lying on a demon. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. actually saying what's actually in your camp. You're actually so steep in sin and hell that you're going to lie on a demon. The demon ain't got nothing to do with you sinning. That's you. Because you, these, Jesus died for you to get saved from your sin. The penalty, he died right now, his death and his resurrection saved you from the penalty and that sin may have no more dominion over you. So if sin has no more dominion over you, your sin that has nothing to do with a demon. Right. That has something to do with your proclivity for sin. The depravity of man is not you being as bad as you can ever be. The depravity of man is that there's no por portion of your life that sin doesn't have an impact on. And, and sin always have a negative impact. So the, think about In this situation, the sin has a, such a negative impact on your thinking that you want to blame what you do on demons. Let's see, then the demon get, if the person gets married to a wife, then the demon will be removed because yeah, then yeah, yeah. there's no more demon. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, tell him what the guy said. I mean, okay, the so, guy, the, so the, the, yeah, so the guy told me when I was asking about the questions that Pastor Jay gave me, first of all, he said he was being interrogated. I wasn't interrogating the man, I was very kind about it. He's like, Why are you asking me this? Where are all these different factors? And then he said, I'm not a fun friend. I was like, well, I thought as a believer, because you said you were Christian. He's like, okay. And I said, I would just ask you about, you know, your faith walk. Because I said, I have my journey. I just wanted you to tell me a little bit about it. And he said, well, I know. And he goes into this long, this long spiel about him having a demon for his lust. He says, I still have demons, which is lust and looking for sex. He said, my demon is sex. If I find a wife... Then, in the eyes of God, I'm doing what's right. And I said, so how do you know that's going to happen? So is that mean if you marry 
a woman and you get a wife, all your other sins are gone? Are they all gone? He's like, no, there's no way perfect, but I don't know, I'll be doing that one right thing because I would have a wife. I was like, so really, basically, all you're saying is you want some sex, but you want to just say that right. is going to be cut. I mean, just flat out say what you want instead of all these other all of these other postures he was doing. And then he started saying, when two or three are gathered in the midst, he is there. And he's like, just think about this. If you would have never talked to me, like say I could find a job because I let him know that I had resigned. I didn't get fired. I had to resign from my kids. Anyway, I let him know that. He's like, well, what if I find a job for you? You would have never had that job had you not spoken to me. And God knows who you need in, life, in your life. So I would be the one that would be finding you this job. And you'd be like, hey, this is so great that I talked to you. Now I have this job. I was like, what? So not only does he what? want you to call you big daddy, he wants to become your savior and your God. And he wants you to believe that all your answers for all your problems are on Will him. be answered by but him. They, but, right. But, they, but you know what? Let's go back. When you asked about his faith walk and began to interrogate mm -hmm. him, and I'm going to say interrogate him because that's what he said. Mm -hmm. He did say that church is not about all this fellowship, right? Remember that? Right, he did. Church yes, is not he about did. all this fellowship. See, if you want, uh -huh. if you really want to find out somebody Christian, start keep asking questions and you'll find out they ain't saved. So then he say, oh, church is not about the fellowship. We're supposed to be going get, and, and, and getting people to, to into, into the, did he say the kingdom or the Christ? He said kingdom. Which, to the kingdom, okay. Yeah. Now, now, now I want y'all to listen closely. Please follow me. But then he said he don't like church. Okay. Then he said he don't like fellowship. So, and then he felt intimidated even talking about his faith walk to another Christian. Why would you, as a born again saint, feel intimidated to talk about your faith walk? with another sister and brother in Christ. Let that sink mm. in for a minute. <laughs> because the Bible says, they will know you are my disciple by the way you love each other. Mm. What we do is practice our faith in fellowship with each other before we go out into the world and witness. By the way, this guy characterized his walk, he's not going out, but he says that's what we're supposed to do. Which one is it? You don't want fellowship, so how are you going to show your faith? You don't like church? That's the body of Christ. And I know some of you are going to sit back, well, this is the stuff in church. Stop. Okay? When I've investigated, 90% of church hurt that people claim is their own rebellion in church. They don't like to follow leadership. That is right. They don't like to follow the Bible. They just want to do. Go back and read the Judges. Read the beginning of most of the chapters. It says everyone does what is right in his own eyes. And then he says that after John 3, 16, please continue to read John 3, 17, 18, 19, and 20. See, men prefer darkness, choice of darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They don't want to come into the light because their deeds are going to be exposed. What I found out is, because I did a whole big study for the past, you know, a couple of years on this church hurt. I'm going to say 90% of what I found out was these people that are claimed to be church hurt. When you keep digging, you find rebellion in them. Now, are there some sometimes are there are there instances where there's abuse of authority and power? Yes, and it's really evident too. But when you dig a little deeper, you'll find out that their hang up is their own idolatry of self, their own private interpretation of what church should be. It's never, it's misinterpreting the scriptures and take it out of context. Like this guy did. I think about it. This guy's trying to use scripture to get you because he knows you're a Christian. See, it's the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I can be your guru where two or three are gathered. I'm your miss. Not to, Okay. <laughs> Again, this just <laughs> irks the heck out of me. What that scripture is using is about judgment. You don't take the scripture and just paste it over everything. Because my question to you is, is Jesus not with you if you are not gathered with another saint? You mean I got to go find me a saint for Jesus to be with me? 
Jesus, the Bible says this, Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm in Christ. Christ is in me. The father's in him. God is always with me. What if I can't, again, think about just the logic of that. As that has some extra power. See, that's that witchcraft formula taking the Bible out of context. When you read that in, I think it's Matthew 18 or 15, where it talks about the discipline of the church. It talks about when your, 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 your brother or sister violates you and it goes down, goes down, you have to kick him out of church. And then it goes down. He says, we're two, he didn't change subject matter. He said, with two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst. He said he's ratifying the decision. That's based upon the Old Testament law of where there are two or three witnesses, everything is established. You can't have a court case in the church without witnesses. So by two or three witnesses, everything is established. When two or three of you to, to deal with this certain violation in the church, God is saying, I'm with you on every decision you make. You, whatever you bind, meaning whatever you sanction, you sanction. Whatever you decide to set free, you set free. This is not peanut butter. You spread over everything. That's why the church don't have any power. But I digress. Let's get back to the point. The point is, <laughs> this guy's using this. And he's saying he's he was baptized 12, 13. His favorite scripture is John 3, 16. Our job is to get people in the kingdom, but he don't want to fellowship with nobody. Y'all can't be that stupid. Right. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. And see, I became a Christian late in life, so see, you can't trick me. You know, I didn't play. I didn't have. I didn't. I didn't have the game played with me. You know what I'm saying? I came late in life. Mm -hmm. I, I was forty something, so I know the world, and I know what it's like. And I was very successful in the world, so I know the world and what it offers, and all the trappings. And I know what Christ offers. And once you come to Christ, you you're excited to tell everybody about Him. Because guess what? I instead of affecting people on their day to day worldly basis with their economics when they have business and all that, what I tell people now has eternal ramifications. It's like dropping a seed or a pebble in some water and watching the concentric circles get larger and larger. When you're dealing in this world and in this flesh, it only is temporal. Everything around you, I want, if you're listening to this, I want you to touch as many things as you can right now that's in front of you and think about this. Everything that you touch is going to be gone. It's a mirage. It's not real. It's, it's real to you right now because you're in a temporal state, but even you are decaying as we speak. There's nothing that's going to stop you from decaying. So he uses these lines. So he get next mm -hmm. to you. And I hate to say it, women, ladies, saints of God, sisters, daughters, friends, ladies, women of God. A lot of you fall for it. And then you end up with a hub son. And don't we love those hub sons? And don't we love those hub sons? You end up <laughs> with a husband that's really your son. <laughs> But you just want to be married. Mm -hmm. And he's worse to you than a son because he's an adult man. And he's going to cost you more than a son ever could. You follow what I'm saying? So, so yeah, he used yeah, that, yeah. but he didn't want to share his faith. I thought that was so interesting. I thought that so too. That yeah. yeah. And it felt intimidated. No, you, he used the word, you're interrogating him. I feel uncomfortable. You're not the funny fun girl that you were the other day. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. You're not laughing and joking with me the other day. I'm asking you about your faith. We can laugh and joke about what we what goes on in churches and stuff. But and then you say ask him about church, and then he says, "Oh, I haven't been in three months." Goes <laughs> from time to time. Yeah, it's a personal journey. Yeah, it's a personal journey. I haven't been in three or four months. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was all interesting when I was telling you about all of it because it was it was yep. just different. Just leave it right there. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. You know, but again, how many I mean you you guys can't even imagine how many women I know are dealing with this right now. 
Because again, once they get married to them, they stuck. Mm -hmm. They're emotionally stuck. They're stuck to their vows and they're stuck. If you want a husband, give him the test of Ephesians chapter five, where it says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And read how Christ loved the church and measure him up to that. Him just knowing God, it could be any God. Him knowing John 3, 16, the Bible says, even the demons know who God is and tremble. So knowing God and having a knowledge of God is different from submitting to, to Jesus Christ, the Savior, and the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. See, because the enemy has made Christianity everything but dealing with sin. See, if you would ask me about my Christian experience, I will quickly go to the fact that, you know, I was so sin, full of sin, and relatively good for the world that I didn't think I was a sinner. But once God opened my eyes, to what was in front of me, the destiny that I was on of gaining the whole world and losing my soul and understanding it's only because of his love and kindness and his patience with me that he wanted to show me the truth. And once the truth was shown to me, I fell on my face and said and repeated the things of Paul in my own words of, oh, what a wretched man that I am who can save me because what I saw I deserved. He gave me mercy. What I saw the sin that should have condemned me, and it did condemn me because I did not believe. Read John 17, 18, 19, and 20. It says, you are condemned already because you don't believe, and I didn't believe. Yeah, I thought Jesus was the candy man like everybody else. I figured I was blessed because I had more than uh, a little bit more than everybody else. I had nice things. I had a nice business. I had nice, nice stuff. I had all the temporal stuff that you could imagine. But I didn't have a relationship with Christ. And even Jesus said in the Bible, he said at a point, he said, you cast out demons by my name. You did all this work in my name. And he going to say, I never knew you. You know why? Because you never bowed your knee to the sovereign savior. You never bowed your knee to the one who died for you on the cross and was rose for your justification. All you wanted was a cosmic bellhop. And what you do is go to these churches that teach you these formulas to activate the cosmic Jesus. Let me tell you something. You can't activate a sovereign God with your weak worship. And there's no pattern that they conflate and make you think that they do. They jump from the old Testament to the new Testament. Let me let you know something, church. You are not Israel. You're not even spiritual Israel. You're the body of Christ. So, so he calls all that dead works. So you're going out having all this stuff, and these guys are coming in, mixing stuff up. And you know, and again, if you've been taught the word of God, you know better. But you're so lonely. You're tired of being alone. It's been a long time, and I get it. You, some of you've been waiting so faithfully. Some of you've gotten out of the marriage you did when you wasn't saved, and you're waiting, and 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 they hear, and they go come at you because really. You single saints, women, your blood in the water. You still got the desires you have as a woman to be touched, to be held. That doesn't go away because you say, but it puts a target on your back. And here they come. If they could just say enough Christianese language and you fall for it, they got you. They got you. And it doesn't make a difference what the season it is. They got you. I mean, so many. And I'm talking about different age group. Oh, he believe in God. Did you ask him what God he believe in? No, he just told me he's, you know, and when I do, well, and the ones who dare to go back and ask, this is normal conversation. He believes in the spiritual, universal, you know, I don't necessarily espouse to Jesus, but you know, Muhammad and Buddha and Zen and Dia, oh, he believe that ain't the God you believe in. Your God is exclusive. Mm -hmm. then I got a question where your faith is and who you loyal to because if you fall for that for your for your flesh then you need to be you need to examine the, yourself to see if you in the faith or not but they don't like that teaching as as somebody would yeah. say <laughs> they don't like that they don't like that don't bring that over here they want to hear no, that they don't want that kind of teaching no <laughs> they, they want like to hear that. from me how God don't bless them 10 different ways if they do 5 different things Spin around, jump around, put some money in the pot, uh, uh, walk around, throw oil all over your house, 
and God is going to bless you. Well, if you uh, believe stuff like that, you can't be that stupid. Let me ask you saints a question. I, well, I'm a, I can ask, my, ask myself, because hasn't God blessed me before I came to Christ? Yeah. You know what? Being rich and having nice things is common. That's not the blessings of God. That's common blessings. You say, well, how do you know that? He tells you in the Bible, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. He said he gives to those he chooses. There you go. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. So having stuff is nothing for God because everybody can, anybody who he decides to get it can have it. But what you receive from Christ, being in Christ, is Ephesians chapter 1. Read that. All what you get inside of Christ. You don't get those outside of Christ. And none of those are material. But see, these guys play with your minds. And they, and like I say, they, uh, uh, they begin to do some other things. So tell about, let's do with the gaslighting thing. Let's move on to the gaslighting thing. Okay, about, which um, part of the gaslighting? You whichever, can't tell whichever me. Whichever one you want to start. No, whichever one you want to start with. Okay, about, well, let's start uh, with. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -mm. Go ahead. Well, I'll I'll start with the way I talk. We'll we'll start with that one because I I don't know what that one is, but we'll start with that one. And when I was talking to him, he said, "Oh wow," he's like, "You know what? I can take you anywhere." And forgive me for those of you that are of a different nationality. He says, you sound like a white girl. I was like, excuse me? Uh, why did you say that? He's like, well, you know, I really like ghetto girls, but I could take you anywhere, like on a business dinner or lunch, because you won't be intimidated by the businessmen's wives. I could take you anywhere. I was like, okay. He's like, don't be offended. That's really a compliment. I was like, is it? Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, and then when you question so. about it again, oh, I'm just kidding. See, see, uh, yeah, that that <laughs> that thing of I'm blacker than you, and you sound like a white mm -hmm. girl. That, right. See again, that's that's right. gaslighting you. That's mm -hmm. I'm complimenting you, but I'm giving you shade at the same time. Right. And then for him to go on and say. I can use you to make money, but I really like a preference of ghetto girls. Now, do you see the, the now, now, th what we're talking about right now, uh, 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 men and women, this is one person saying all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So just one. So just one this person. is one person <laughs> saying, Big Daddy, I know the drive 316. I can take you anywhere. But I prefer get a woman. This is all one person in a conversation saying this. Mm -hmm. That you just met. Not even right. two weeks in the two weeks that you just met. And he's throwing it, he's throwing everything at you. So I'm going to see, I want you to call me Big Daddy, but then I'm going to tell you, you're really not my type, but I could use you. And you're mm. supposed to be, oh, he told me I sound like a white girl. And I'm supposed to go, oh, man, I get that all the time. And, man, you're right. I, you can. <laughs> you, but you just told me you don't want you want a ghetto girl. So think right. about this. You hook, He's giving you the sign that you're really not his type, but he wants to use you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he'll marry you. And then one day, Shamina Linka Quita will be in your <laughs> car while you're at work. Right. Because he prefer ghetto girls. And they should be clapping in my face on every syllable. And I'm like, right. huh? <laughs> I'm like, no. Yeah. 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 Well, see, so, see, after that conversation like that, you know, the thing about it is, a lot of women don't even hear that. Mm. They don't hear that. They don't hear the shade and the insult. They think it's cute. Well, too, you, you pointed out to me that the the way that he was being condescending, it was very subtle. And when he does, I realize it when he was doing it, but it's just like when you slide that in there and try to go past something and then you say something like, oh, you know, I'm just kidding. 
But it's not funny. Don't get don't yeah. don't get mad. You you know try to yeah. play it down because the person could be offended at that very moment. But you you gotta catch it. He had to catch it. So no no don't be offended. That's a compliment. So that you don't what blast him into a million years. Like no, that's not a compliment. And then at the same time, you are downgrading other women. And like you already told me about their personal status in life. Why are you doing that? You're really hating on women right now, but you're trying to get one. I'm not, I don't understand what you're trying to do right now. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm confused. Yeah, we figured out that he's been looking at too many YouTube videos. Right. Talking about every single, every single social media thing that you've ever seen. Right. I was like, why are you talking about this? You know, it doesn't. And and this man is not a young man. This man is 50 years old. That's why I say food comes in all ages and all sizes. Right, exactly. Hey, fool. Just because he's older doesn't mean he ain't no fool. But you know, I the and then, first and then he time... says stuff like, "I don't have kids. I don't want kids, mm-hmm. but I'll be good to your kids." Excuse me. <laughs> I don't have kids. Okay, I get that part. I don't want kids. Okay, but I'll be good to your kids. You don't want kids and you're going to be good to my kids? Huh? Well, what it is, is you want to come in and rule my house and rule my kids. And then if it don't work, you can vamp because they're not your kids. Mm -hmm. You see, I give you the keys to the kingdom. You come in, I'll give you some dominion over my children. And if it doesn't really work, you can vamp because they're not your kids. So you 50 50 years old. How how many times have you done that? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, see, we have to get more inquisitive and we can't just, again, allow our flesh to rule us when it comes to relationships. And again, I'm not talking about like I've been perfect. I've I've been on the other end. Okay. Church girls were the easiest. Because you could play the game. Shoot, I I might have said at a time before I was saved, John 316. Mm -mm. (laughs) <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and play. But, but, you know. but I think that's 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 important to know, right? That you could call yeah. it out because you used to play the game, you used to roll the dice, yeah. you used to do all those kind of things. Me too. I'm 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 not it, saying because it, it, I'm doing, yeah. Because no. it'd be nothing for me to, to for for man. Go on, go to church, sing your song, be in the choir, and then be back at my house. Yeah. Okay. I know y'all ain't used to real talk. Y'all passed a bit of pastor since he was two. Oh, let's go to the one. Why used to what he was he, talking about? <laughs> Why he was talking about, you know, his Christian life when he thought he had the upper hand. He said he even said double down and said, "Oh, I was I was thinking of, I was going to be a pastor." Right. Now he thought me, he was going to be a pastor. Now let's go through this. Baptized twelve thirteen. No church history. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, John three sixteen is his only scripture. This is the first thing that came out of his mouth. Nothing mm-hmm. else. No. But you were going to be a pastor. But, but you, you don't want a fellowship. fellowship, and you don't want to tell anybody because about your about your faith. You're and you're the, right. So, so what kind of well, so what <laughs> in what you told us about before you said I'm gonna be a pastor? <laughs> did you threw that in there? See, he's throwing stuff to see if he can hook her. I'm gonna say I'm gonna be. I was gonna. He gonna go straight to the top. I was gonna be a pastor. Really? But you don't tell like me people. About that. Uh, but you don't like people. You don't like fellowship. So tell me how that works. Right. Yeah. I mean, I you said we're supposed well, to go out. You're really yeah. Intelligent. You really interrogate me. I'm only asking questions about what you put out there. You didn't. Put, you didn't ask him was he gonna be a pastor. He no, said he that. Put, he said that exactly. He said he was a Christian. Hmm. Then you come to find out when he's talked about his church that he wants to brag on it. See, this is what I'm saying. He didn't talk about the teaching. He didn't talk about the preaching. He didn't even talk about the choir. His best shot was, you know, the church I attend, the church I belong to, uh, has three services. But I don't right? attend. <laughs> but when's the last time you been? Oh, uh, three, four months ago. Excuse With the Bible study class. <laughs> and, and let me tell you what I did. What I did. I took the Bible study class out for dinner or lunch and pay for it every time. And then the next time they took, the next time I went out, 
I didn't pay for it. And did nobody pay for my meal? I felt, I felt some, some type of way. way. <laughs> okay. I was like, let me, take, let, let, let me help you out with this. <laughs> Sisters. When a brother start using your terminology, <laughs> I felt some kind of way. I, I guess I'm just too much, man. Men don't talk like that. <laughs> I'm going to study say, man, I was pissed. I was mad. I felt some kind of way. Women mm-hmm. say that. Men don't say that. Now, if you want to be a man to say that, but yeah, I, I no. No. We have, we have fostered well, culture. Of these. Go ahead. He did what? I said he did pray about it, though. And what did the Lord tell him? Well, you remember, he well, he said, I don't know why I allow people to take advantage of me. Why do people keep advantage? So I went and I prayed. So he's telling me, he said, I prayed. And I said, why does it keep happening, Lord? And I was like crying. Like, I felt like Holy Spirit, tell me. And he said, the Holy Spirit came upon my body. And it says, why do you feel that people are taking advantage of you when I have given you these things to bless other people? Touch yourself and just understand that people are not giving you anything. You are trying to give you, you're trying to give them something else. And that, the stuff you're trying to give them, it doesn't even belong to you. Now, after just before you say the Pastor Jay, just after him saying that, he still felt a type of way because he's never gone back to church, even though he had this spiritual moment Epiphany. from the Holy Spirit. So, right. So he yeah. says, right. So, yeah, he had his epiphany and, and, and it didn't change anything. Right. He still hasn't gone See, back. Let me, let me, let me help you all <laughs> out with something. When I met, when I, when, when I truly met Jesus and the Holy Spirit came upon me, I was a changed man. I wasn't a perfect man. I was a change man. I knew I knew I wanted more of him. And for him to now think about this, he free. Did nobody ask him to be the big shot? Now see, think about what he's trying. He's he's trying to build value in her mind because she's a Christian. So I'm gonna keep telling these Christian stories. I wanted to be a pastor. I I was in church. I got I've been doing this for a long while, but I really don't like fellowship. I really don't like and we should be getting people in the kingdom. He's he's shooting different shots. He's he's sending mixed messages, and now the messages he had a he had a, a moment with the Holy Spirit, and it's all about him. Mm-hmm. Okay, he was generous enough to take these people, but yet and still he feels he's been taken advantage of. First of all, in this story, did not nobody ask him to take nobody nowhere and pay for nothing? <laughs> he did it four times on his own. Right. So how you being taken advantage of and you did it on your own or did you do it so they could pay for you well if you did it so they could pay for you then that's not Christian giving that's <laughs> you setting them up to be indebted to you so ant right. out what you just said the Holy Spirit can deal with you <laughs> like that yeah <laughs> because if you're using your resources to manipulate people into being indebted to you then that's not God maybe that's one of them mm. demons <laughs> All it takes Saints, is a little common sense. You know. But the but the weird part about uh this, the, the what we want people to understand is when T was telling me about this guy, I predicted everything, 90% of what he was going to say. You sure did. Before I gave her the questions to ask, and he said exactly he did the playbook. He did the playbook well. He's so this way. <laughs> in in my mind, he scored a touchdown to prove these dudes are simple minded. Mm-hmm. They prey on you women, and y'all got to see this. He'd be better saying I ain't in church. He'd have done better saying, you know, I don't go to church. Mm-hmm. I, I went to church as a kid, and I really haven't attended church. And you still could have had a conversation with him. See, I'm not barring him away, but why lie? Exactly. Why stop lying? Come come aboard. 
do a different, di you know, like I always say, do a different. You can talk about anything. You can talk about a different topic, subject. It doesn't matter. It didn't have to be that one. And now we get in there. I'm very uncomfortable. Uh, let's. Can we not talk about this? I don't want this I, relationship I'm, to be Christian. You know what? And you're a Christian. And you're a Christian woman. <laughs> so, 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 so I want to be. I want to be sex, drugs, <laughs> and rock and roll. Yeah, that's just crazy. Right. With a whole bunch of sex yeah, demons. Like I just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want. I don't want my faith. Hold on. Your relationship <laughs> with God is personal, but it's not private. I'm gonna say it again. Your relationship with God is personal, but it's not private because we're all part of a body. Mm -hmm. And the body works together for the good of God. For the edifying of the saints and the building up of the saints until we come into the full stature of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's Ephesians. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, everybody's relationship with God is idiosyncratic, meaning that it's personal to you. My relationship with God is personal. Your relationship with God is personal. But and you may be a, a head and I may be a foot or you may be a thumb and I may be an ankle, but it's all one body and we all work together to grow. OK. But it's not private. It's personal, but not private. And the problem is we got too if he is, we got too many people like him claim to be Christians and they, he's not even a good long ranger Christian, mm -hmm. which is oxymoron because there's no such thing. If you're right. part of the body and work with the body and attached to a local body to work with the body, too many people are claiming they're they're part of the body of Christ, but they don't like being around Christians. That that don't, that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. You just like be you just like doing what you want to do. And normally, the people that I know that are Lone Rangers, when I talk to them and they and, and, and they they're Lone Rangers in this thing, eventually, if you if you talk to them long enough, you know who their God really is themselves. Because I noticed the Long Rangers never have moments of God where God disagrees with them and says, I did tell y'all that y'all need the fellowship with the saints. I did make that like, you know, part of the 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 walk. That it's just not about uh sitting out here uh talking to other people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I did tell you that. But these lines these guys say are amazing to me. And, and again, it's it's it is quite just as amazing when I find out that sisters fall for this. You know, it's not even minimum requirements. It's like these are not even real requirements that are happening. These are just things he's saying to hook you. And, and if and if your flesh is overriding your faith and your your spirit, then you'll fall for it every time. Over and over again. And where you was happy in church and single and just didn't have anybody, any no no guy, now you're kind of miserable in church because everybody know you're married. Your church may have married you and he didn't disappear on you. And we know what didn't happen. He tricked you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. The pastor didn't make a mad. Or he'll give you over sensitive when the pastor confront him with something that is manly. I've never met so many men that in their feelings all the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, and you know me. I can't. <laughs> I cannot deal with all these men, and they. I cannot figure out your emotional strength, and ride the roller coaster with you when you're confronted about simple things like taking care of your family, handling your business, taking care of your wife, being an upright man, coming, being on time, your word being your bond. Not on these guys about being rich or nothing like that. Just stuff that I think that's important for people in general, men and women alike. Like your word mm -hmm. should be your bond. The Bible says you let your yes be yes and your no be no. But when I'm talking to you, I get a whole bunch of if, ands, maybes, you know, can't count on you. You overpromise and underperform. And then when I confront you with what you said you do and you didn't do it, now you in your feelings. And here come your your sanctified wife windmilling for you. Pastor, you know what you said last week? Hurt, hurt, hurt little Johnny's feelings. I don't care. <laughs> you have to put up with that dude yeah. being soft like that. I don't have to put up with that because he never he didn't have to tell me that he would do something. I understand things happen, but my thing, just like you pick you, you, you won't hesitate to call me when you in your feelings. Call me when you make a when you give your word and you can't fulfill it. 
don't stay away from church and hide and show up one day. Because see, the last point of contact that I had with you, you were supposed to do X, Y, and Z three weeks ago. And now you're showing up and then you tell me, well, Pastor, you know, I was felt some kind of way. Oh, here I go. Dude, don't tell me that. As a man, <laughs> don't tell me you felt some kind of way. I don't want to, mm. I don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. Mm. Call me old fashioned. You know, talk to them gurus about that. Don't talk to me with that. You know. So ladies, ask the question about God. So keep asking. And if he gets defensive about his faith, he ain't saved. And and we you, always say you're not gonna get defensive about your faith. But you're, you're not gonna get defensive about your faith. No. Wouldn't you be happy that a a man of God that you want to be with is to ask you to clarify your faith? Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. See? Like, yay. Yeah. That's See? great. I, yeah, I think the other thing that you, you told me too, which I've been using for a long time now, is the power of no that we've discussed like at length. Especially when someone asks you for something, they think they're entitled to something from you. Just like simple stuff like, hey, give me a picture. No, well, why not? Are you hiding something? No, but I have every right and everybody in this world has the prerogative to give you or not give you something if they don't want to. And I don't want to. So the answer is no. Yeah. Ladies, one of the biggest lessons you can learn is a no can turn to a yes, but a yes can never turn into a no. You tell someone no, you change your mind, you tell yes, they're happy. You tell someone yes, and then you fell twice, and you say no, you can't have it, then you're going to have an enemy. Tell him no 90% of the time up front. And you're going to see the beast come out of him. You're not going to take you three mm -hmm. weeks. It's not going to take you three months. It'll eventually come out. Because think about it. What this guy told you to do some things when he, te he texts you. And look, it start coming out. Oh, I guess you don't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> because I'm not talking to you at the time you want to talk. Right. I am busy. I do mm -hmm. have a family. You know this about me. I am a single mom with four kids. I told you that. So you can't make room in your mind because you're so great and you're so awesome that I can't be busy. I got to contact you back. And then, hold up, let's end this with, he wants to be known as the what kind of man? The night-night man. The night-night man. You're going to fall in love with my <laughs> voice and not be able to go to bed unless you talk to me. Y'all women that heard that crap. <laughs> Mr. Night-night. That's night. what y'all just say. No one ever told me you'd be called no night-night man. I never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> night night man. <laughs> he, must, he must think he must think you you your head is full of popsicles and blow pop and lollipops. Night He's night man. man. Night night 50 man. Fifty years old man. Night night man. Oh, and man. remember the part where I told you that uh, he was having that whole attitude when we were talking, and he and I said, "Well, I'll just get off the phone so you could go to bed." Aw, look at you being sweet. You said, "Wait a minute." Did he literally say, "Aw"? I said he did. He said, "Aw." See, <laughs> I, I, I'm done. I'm done. T, I'm done. <laughs> we we didn't almost be here all hour. I'm done. I, I I can't take no more. Ladies, be careful. Watch out. These dudes are out here, and I can't believe some of you say to follow him. And I understand why you some of you want to follow for these dudes, but y'all gotta y'all gotta. Hey, bring them to me, and I'll tell you what to say. <laughs> get in contact with me, <laughs> and you'll find out if he's real or not. If yeah. he's live or memorex. Because any man who, does, who says they're a Christian and doesn't want, is not confident in sharing their faith, they're probably not a Christian. They're just saying something because you're a Christian. Oh, and let's do this. Tell me the kind of man you want, because I don't want to leave with that. Don't tell a man the kind of man you want because he's going to put on the master suit, the cape, and the cowl, and the glasses, and go from Clark, Clark Kent to Superman on you. Don't do that. Yeah, don't tell him, just be the man you're going to be, and I'll determine if you're the kind of man I want that, that you fit in my life. Right. Is he just tell him that you're gonna hurt his feelings. Well, why ain't you gonna tell me? You got I ain't got nothing to hide. I just told you to be who you want. I'll determine. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna ask you what kind of woman you want. I'm just gonna be the kind of woman I am, and then you determine if I'm the kind of woman you want in your life. Mm -hmm. See, they don't like that kind of teacher. They sure don't. Because you tell him he gonna put come back up, Pastor Jay. So he's going to come back up and finish up his statements because he was doing that type of teaching, of course. <laughs>
and we've been enjoying have this conversation and we always go long so these are conversations that could go for a, a long time hey Pastor right. Chase. yeah okay so so yeah I, you know I and mean, we're gonna go a little longer now since we all been on our so um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the night night man. You know that these women the you gotta group, you gotta you gotta go out of there. You know, don't 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 give him the gun and the bullets to deceive you to shoot you with. Be less informative mm-hmm. about yourself. Don't give him all your information. Don't tell him what you want. Just tell him be a man. What is that? Mm-hmm. If he if, if he don't know what a man is, then that's another signal run. <laughs> right. Don't be like a Supreme Court justice woman talking about, I don't know what a woman is. Mm, mm, mm. I know what a woman is. Ask me. Ask me what a woman is. What is a woman, Pastor? Ask me, T. My mama, <laughs> my sister, my auntie, <laughs> my grandmama, my great grandmama. Those are women. Anything before a woman, any any hyphen before a woman is not woman to me. It's an aberration. Okay? So, yeah, I know what a woman is. And if he says, well, you know, I don't know what a man, you know, uh, I want you to tell me what a man is. No, you're trying to trick me to tell you what kind of man I want. I just want you to be the man. You're 50 years old. You should have perfected at least being a man. So just be the man you are. You're not a 20-year-old. You're 50, 50, 50 years old, man. Be the man you've you been. Be the man that don't like kids and don't want kids, right? Be the man mm-hmm. who who said he's gonna be a pastor. Be the man who got baptized at twelve. Be the man who said that uh, uh, he hasn't been to church in three months. Be the man who who spent money for a month on lunches and then expected somebody to pick up his tab. Be that guy that feels some kind of way, and then I'll decide if you're the kind of man <laughs> I want you to be. You know what? All this shade, I love it. So, you know what, Pastor Jay, since we've been talking about this, remember those questions. I was wondering about these questions that, and I know you have something to say about it. So the question of this, I'm you're asking me. Well, he asked me. So we're going to change the subject. So what kind of man are you looking for? What do you expect out of a man to bring to the table? And what can you bring to the table for a man? See, red flag. Throw, throw, throw the red, flag on the field. red flag. <laughs> yeah, no. Red flag See, on the, the play. question is not is not the question is simply what are you gonna bring to my table? Let's cut through the first part. Let's get to the main thing. What do you have that you can bring to the table, ladies? Mm. You are so specially made by God that you bring you to the table. Just leave it like that. You bring you to the table. The way God has made you, he can't see what the beauty is that you bring to the table that makes him want to go out and work and take care of you and provide for you and the way you strengthen him when he comes home from a hard day at work, when the whole world turns against him, you in his corner. What do you mean what I bring to the table? I bring all of that. But see, he's been watching them little little guru things for how much money mm-hmm. she's making and all that. Let, let, you know, let's stop. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to even go down that road. But yeah, you bring you to the table. Oh, remember the popcorn situation? I forgot that one. It just when you said that, it made me think of that. Remember the popcorn? No, what, what the popcorn? Remember he said, oh, we get tired? Or, oh, oh, oh yeah, no, that no. part too. Okay, yeah, say ahead. what that was. No, tell us what okay, it so, was. Okay, so he was saying to me that he was describing if we were going to movies and go on a date, that if he paid for a ticket and he stepped away and went to the restroom and he came back and he saw that I bought the soda and I bought the popcorn or whatever other candies or whatever, that he would look and be like, oh, that's so sweet. I've never had anybody do that for me. So he went to the bathroom, right? Right, right. And then you're sitting there. So while he's at the bathroom... You didn't got up and went to get the popcorn. Mm-hmm. And you made it. Now think about this. And you made it back before he made it back. And you're loaded down with all the wham wham and zuzus and stuff from the from the from the bar. 
nine times out of ten, everybody should know this and everybody does know this. It costs more to buy the stuff than it does for the tickets half the time. Mm. So now you done went because he bought you the t- See, this is the thing. He's taking you out unless, you know, and I tell women this, you're the prize. I grew up like this. My father, and I guess some of these guys don't have, my father said this. It'd be better for you to save and, and go out on a real date than go on a date that you can't afford. Dating to me, from my point perspective, and I know there's others, and I'm not knocking it, but I look at it as I'm going to help take, I'm going to go out with you. And I'm going to, I've asked you out. You didn't ask me out. I've asked you out. So in asking you out, I should take care of some other stuff. You know what I'm saying? There should be some other stuff that I take care of. Because I've asked you out, right? And if I pay for the tickets while I'm at the bathroom and on my way back, I'm probably going to stop and get the popcorn. Matter of fact, before I go to the bathroom, I'm going to say, hey, do you want me to get you some popcorn or something on my way back? Mm -hmm. You know, don't have so much. Don't let this, this world trick you into, oh, I need to show him I can afford it. You ain't got to do all that. There may come a time when you just come and say, hey, you pay for it all this time. I'll pay for it now. Fine. But why on the first date do you think you got to pay for anything? You're the prize. He's asked you out. You didn't ask him out. Mm-hmm. And he wants to feel special that you didn't spend money on him. Ladies, don't spend no money on no dude. Backwards. You got children. Yeah, you got you got you got children at home, and he wants to take you out. Let him take you out. And if you got to go into your pocket for anything, you need to cancel him finish your date and cancel him because remember he even alluded to that if he goes out and takes you to dinner and all that he expects to have, be able to have sex with you remember that right and he also said in the same same weird breath that if he were because i think he used the same scenario of doing the bible study but he said if i am a man and i were to pay for let's say it's a group of ladies and i pay for all the ladies He's entitled to sleep with every single one of them. I said, no, sir, that is not how that works. No, 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 no. That's what he said. You're not entitled to every single one of those ladies' bodies because you paid for all their meals at the table. What? Who said that? Where are you coming from? Like, that's weird. So that, le- so that lets me know something, too. That lets me know that probably this thing with the uh, going out and taking them out to dinner, there's probably more women and maybe all women. And they all accepted him to pay because he asked to pay and he tried to, and he tried to hit on all of them. And they were like, Nope. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> you, you know, but then he started feeling a kind of way because they wouldn't sleep with him because they said, no, yeah, they were, no, yeah, they they said, no, that. they're not. Yeah. They're like, no, <laughs> you ain't going to, you're not going to, you're not going to deserve to sleep with me because you didn't uh you didn't uh pay for me a dinner. Don't get sell yourself out for no steak dinner. That's crazy. And see, that's what I'm saying. He hasn't said one thing that's worth him going out with. One thing. You know, it's, it's not worth it. Well, then he you started know? asking about my friend, right? Well, yeah, any guy who's, who starts talking about who he's perceived competition, he's a loser. <laughs> you know, you really don't, you don't really mince words. You know that, Pastor Jay. You don't mince words yeah. at all. You know, hold back, don't When, when a, when a dude, dude starts asking about the perceived competition, he or she is a loser. Because <laughs> we're talking, and you're going to put my mind on somebody you don't know, and so you weren't thinking to about till you put my mind on it. Yeah. Hold on, you need to put your best foot forward. Mm-hmm. And if there comes a time that you need to know, I'll let you know. But right now, we're just getting started. Why are you worried about the competition? Mm-hmm. It, it, some stuff could just be cut through, and I, and I guess people are playing the game, and it's like there's no reason to. 
Yeah. Just say what's on your mind. You know, and he said it, but he be muddled it with everything. One, he's a lustful oversex dude, and that's what he wants. And he likes mm-hmm. ghetto girls. That's the only true thing that he said. Right. The rest of it was smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. The rest of it was smoke and mirrors. This scenario of him taking people out and all that stuff, and yeah, that probably won't true either. <laughs> he just he was just trying to paint himself as this this philanthropic nice guy and that the world is so mean to him because he's so nice and he gets taken advantage of because he's so nice. Man, please. Well, you know, he's he's an entrepreneur extraordinaire. Uh, oh, God, let's go with that one. When a dude... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wherever you guys are from, do you have the guys on the corner selling pretzel sticks? Them dudes are entrepreneurs. Okay. That don't that word is thrown around to cover so much crap. An entrepreneur, a lot of times these entrepreneurs be just some unemployed cats. <laughs> they can't hold down a steady job. Please don't fall for I'm an entrepreneur and your lights go off. Be like, oh my god, he's an entrepreneur. You would pay the light bill. To ask him. What are you doing to be an entrepreneur? How long have you been doing it? And mm-hmm. and, and be ready for the I am a sanitation engineer. Oh, you just a janitor. Home <laughs> own company. Okay. <laughs> How many contracts you got? Then you come to find out what he do is clean up the church. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> come on now. I mean, that, I mean, that's supposed to mean I'm an entrepreneur. It's supposed to do something, mo- you mo- know, most, for women. Most, most real entrepreneurs will tell you what they do. Like I own a cleaning yeah. company. They won't say entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. They just say, oh, oh I, I own a cleaning company or I own, even for several businesses, they were like, I own several businesses. I own a cleaning company, I own a real estate company. I own, you know, I do that. You know, I've been in business. An entrepreneur is happy to talk about himself because he has to sell himself. If he just stops it, I'm an entrepreneur, he's probably not that. You know, and he gave you some, some something to do. Sound like he, he ain't nothing but a, a, a fancy Uber driver. But and again, that's fine, too. You know, it's honest work. It's good. But, dude, don't, don't, don't you know, starting off with I'm an entrepreneur, you could just say, you know, I drive for I'm a, I'm a courier. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I'll carry it because that's what he did. The way he described it, that's what he was. A carrier. Right. You know, and I carry stuff across state lines when 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 FedEx came. Right. Right. Good. There's nothing wrong with and it. Again, that ain't, there's nothing wrong with that. You know. Right. Just there's nothing be wrong honest. With that. Just, just, just be just honest. using these yeah. titles is so. Yeah, it's I'm so strange with you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and again, this is what we laugh at all the time. Some it, this stuff must work, and, and it must because it, yeah, and and they keep using it to say stuff. And I remember you reminded me long ago. You said men are pretty simple; they're not going to change it up if it's been working. All of a sudden, they're not going to change it. It's just yeah, they're going to keep you, using it because somebody. Yeah, so he, I like can't. I'm yeah. It. Somebody else has to buy it because I'm not thing. with it. Right. Yeah, they gonna, they gonna keep fishing the with the same bait. Yeah, they will keep fishing <laughs> with the same bait because you're yeah. not. Yeah, they're not gonna change not it because it. you look, you're not taking it. You spitting it out. They're just gonna say bye to you, which maybe doesn't happen. Go find already. another one. Because <laughs> he has, he, yeah, he hasn't made his move today, right? Nope, hasn't made a nope, move yet. today. Yeah. So no. yeah. And I and I predicted that, like you know, once you catch them and they figure you ain't you ain't falling for the okey doke, they got to move on. Well, you already said you he's know, in his I, feelings, so he big mad. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah, because <laughs> he wants you to pursue him. Right. So what he called you and said, text you to say good morning. You ain't got to text him back. Oh, you don't talk. You don't talk to me anymore. To, you don't talk to me. <laughs> hold on, he go from hello, hello, <laughs> how you doing to you don't text him back in two hours. 
huh? So you don't want to talk to me now, right now? You don't want to talk to me anymore? Hold on. You just text me, ask me, call me darling, and tell me how how sweet I am, and that I'm the night night man, and and now because I text you back when you wanted me to, now you coming at me like, yeah, so you don't want to talk to me no more? They're like, whoa, what's the switch yeah, up change? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's so childish. Yeah, that's so childish. You know that you dude, you 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 too old to be acting like that. Like I said, I can understand a 15, 16 year old kid, but you you in your fifties and you and you can't handle some time. Uh, let somebody control their own time. You want to occupy mm-hmm. all their time. And if you start talking talk to a guy through these little chat lines, or whatever, and all of a sudden, you yeah. know, he calling you six, six, seven, eight, nine times a day. Come on now. That means either he ain't got nothing else to do or you ain't got nothing else to do. Mm. You know, like, come on now. Ain't nothing changed since the last two hours that you got to call me again. <laughs> I told you I got to pick up my kids. Yeah. You picked them up yet? And I need Wait, to tend what? to them for a little bit. Right, exactly. You just called me two hours ago. Now you call me back. <laughs> you know, I don't get it, but the, you know they they got to wake up. So I, I, like I said, you know these are the things we talk about. And these are uh, in this is the wrap up of cuffing season. So you know, um, as we have already stated before, there's no really cuffing season has no boundaries now. Mm-hmm. It's all year round. It's cuffing. Year round, you know, some of you got cuffed, some of you are about to get cuffed, and some of you are getting uncuffed. You know, some but, of you uh, got didn't even get cuffed, which is great. Uh, which is great, right? If you didn't get if you didn't get got yeah. this season, you still walking around with all your antlers. You didn't get shot. <laughs> you still in the game. <laughs> yeah, you still in the game. So you know, but <laughs> but, but you got to set boundaries and rules. Mm-hmm. And again, if you don't take nothing else from this. Funny conversation that is serious but funny. Ladies, the word you know. Say it with me, T. No. No. Big N, big O with this period. It's a full sentence. Yeah, say no. Yeah, say no. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to see your picture. No, I'm not going to see your picture of my face and my body. No, I'm not getting ready to do that. Yeah, no. No, I'm not getting ready to do that. Because that's what, the, come on, let's be honest, that's what they're leading up to. Of course, and and how yeah. how yeah. sneaky can it be when you tell someone, "Hey, I'm really good at phone sex." Excuse me, how yeah. did we and arrive to, talk to that? Three time? Yeah, yeah. Right, you, I like went, uh. <laughs> right. You went from the Christian man who was gonna be a pastor to I'm really good at phone sex. And you want to be the night night man with phone sex? And you want to be the night night man? And you want me to call me call you Big Daddy? So let's like let's, no. Like I say, the reality of <laughs> all that crap he said, entrepreneur doing all that 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 soul searching stuff. Yeah, that was just a bunch of crap. What's real is yeah, that's not real. Big Daddy loves sex, like ghetto <laughs> girls, want to have phone sex. That's the real him. <laughs> you know, that's the real him. And I, and I want a hold on, and I want a woman that can make me some money. But I really prefer oh, my girls. And right. I want women to buy me. Po- and I want women, and I feel that I can have sex with any woman I want to if I take her out to dinner. Aww. That's what he, that's the that's reality so nice. of who he is. It is. No. It is he really? Now, the key is, the, the the real joke is, with knowing all that, somebody's gonna take the bait. If somebody is, and, and that's somebody gonna be is. that's the sad part. Somebody's yeah, gonna fall for the person, old okie doke. Yeah, if, mm-hmm. if we can follow this person and and watch as he's successful with somebody. Yes, yes. You know, <laughs> and they fall for it. Then that would be something to observe, because because again, I I love observing people and behaviors. Yeah, and, and people again, watching. You know, I love it too. I'm not sitting. I'm not sitting back saying he's condemned to hell and nothing like that. But but let's be honest, you, you know, a lot of these guys are so simple and women, they're so simple minded. You you can figure out what they are if you just pay attention, where they're coming from, if you just pay attention to what they're saying. You know, the, you know, we're not we're not condemning the guy. It's just that dude, say what you want. 
And then, because then you can decide right then and there if you want to be part of that. And if it is not working, you can move on. And if it is working, we can get started right away. Right. Why? Why I play mean, games at tiptoe? Yeah. Yeah, we'll say what it is. Say what it well, is. Well, see, and that's yeah, and that's that's you one know, of the things I was explaining was communication. You should have a lot of things about communication. Uh, hello, don't you need to talk about what you want? So that you can get what you need, but if you're not gonna say, but how is anybody gonna know anything when you're doing all this extra hiding behind the proverbial bushes of what you really want and peeking out and throwing out innuendos? And nobody got time for that. Yeah. Just what do you want, sir? What do you want? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we know of a lady on this uh, wisdom thing that got bamboo. That, that basically, what she say? She in there like swim hair. Yeah. She said no, not no. <laughs> swim where? Not swim hair. Oh, she in there like swim hair. No, swim where? Swim where? Oh, she's With in there w. like swim hair. Yeah, she, no, she's swim where? Like, she, she, oh, she was so close to God, she's in there like swim hair, but she got played like <laughs> like, like swim hair. Swim where? Like what you wear? Swim where? I know, I know she was close to the guy like swim where. She was in there. But you think he's like played. swim hair? Oh, like swim hair? Yeah, she got... Yeah, she got played. <laughs> she got cut off. That's that's crazy. And it, it's happening all the time. And I said, if I didn't have you to like give me some things, because so some of this stuff should uh, back fast forward and backwards. Like Some of this stuff should have already been given by parents, have been laid the foundation for ladies not to have and fall into these weird things that men do. And same thing for men. Been All that stuff should have been take it care of, but sometimes sadly there are parents that do not give that information so you end up going out there and being attacked by all these crazy well, people <laughs> well you know the the the, the sad part about it is it's a, it's a multifaceted issue because what happens mm -hmm. is when you remove the father from the home and you have a young yeah. lady the father is the person that she gets her cues from on what a man to expect of a man and and the father is the one where the man gets accused on how to be a man. So when you remove him and the mother's doing the best that she can, it's mm -hmm. hard for that, 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 that son or that daughter to get the balance that she needs or he or she needs so they can go out here and, and really have an effective, uh, joyful social life. You know, it's not impossible, but, you know, I can see the benefits of having both sides talk to both sexes the, the daughter and the son that they can go out here and, and, and function right because uh a lot of them a lot of these men are, are so just they're so wrapped up in their mama that they can't see another woman and their mama actually ends up doing that to them on purpose and and end up messing these dudes up i mean some of these guys are married and they still talk about their mama is the is the highest woman in their life and that's not what the bible says you know that's not it says a man should leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife mm -hmm. you know and and then for the woman you know uh she doesn't understand what's a good touch and what's a nasty touch because her she didn't see the how a man should treat his mom because he might be there and treat his mama like dirt so now she's grown up right. with the two people that she love. He's an abuser or something like that or, or vice versa, you know, and now she, that's normal to her, you know. So when she picks a guy that's something like her father, she don't understand why she's picking it. And, you know, but it's like she gravitating, you know, uh, to this guy who ends up being 10 times worse than an abuser. But she's used to it because that's what happened to her mom. She thought that's the mm -hmm. part of a relationship for a man to hit on a woman because mama stayed with him. so. You know, or you get the mom and say, girl, that's just a part of it. You need to stay with that good man. He got a good job. You know, stuff, stupid stuff like that. You know, we're so messed up in America. Oh, my God. We are so we have taken our freedoms and we're we've just done everything backwards. The more freedom we have, the more backwards it gets. The more freedom we have, the more depravity that we display. The more freedom we have, the more we devolve backwards. We're not going forward socially and spiritually and emotionally. We're actually becoming like cavemen and women. And we're insulting them by even saying that, you know, we don't even know how to have a, have, 
we don't even know how to have conversations with people. Everybody want to text and exercise their thumbs. And then when you put a capital word, you're yelling. How does it go? Maybe I can't see. What about that? You ever thought of that, that I'm not yelling? I can't see. And I might want you to text me stuff in capital letters. You know what I'm saying? But but the, mm-hmm. but, the, but if somebody else gets that text, why are you yelling at me? What? Mm-hmm. We're, we're just in a weird place in society. And I'm loving it being a person that's love observing people. And I really love people. I, you know, I love the, the, the saints of God, no matter uh we may have some doctrinal differences on the on the side on the secondary things, but yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm, I I love the saints of God. I love the opportunity to talk to people about the faith. I love to see wholesome relationships between men and women, and and have children and stuff like that. That 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 actually is a great thing to watch and see. You know, the world is getting darker. I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys that. Quit listening to all these gurus talking about. Uh, uh, it's going to get better. That's not that's not on the agenda. Okay, that's not on the agenda. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the hearts of men are going to go wax worse and worse. It's going to get worse and worse. And it's going to get darker and darker. And the beauty thing about the darkness, it's going to be judicial darkness. It's going to be the darkness of the heart. And it's going to be the darkness of preference. The three darknesses that are, are elaborated in the Bible. I'll teach on that next week. Uh, that because it's going to get so dark, because all three darknesses are going to be so prevalent in society, the light of God is going to be known. There's not going to be any gray area. You're going to know the children of God versus the children of Satan. When you read First John chapter 3, it talks about what the children of Satan do. They practice sin. They're not oops daisy they're practicing, and they're not struggling, they're practicing. And, 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 and again, those who live in the light will be of the light. And again, the light doesn't mean you're perfect. That means you're willing to be exposed. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. You walk in the light till your deeds can be exposed to the light and then corrected by the light. Be pointed in a new direction. New direction, that's called repentance. But it's going to be so great right now because as dark as the world's getting, even a match light of a saint, think about a real dark room. You take a match light and light a match, it'll light up the whole room. Just a match. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the world. It's becoming dark where even the match light of the saints will light up a room because now, you know, at first there's these gray areas, whereas you got a little bit of darkness and a little bit of light and you kind of got this gray area. And even if you light up a light, it doesn't really change the ambiance of the room. Well, now the world is getting so dark that where you notice the ambiance. If you ever been in a restaurant like it's they're transitioning from. Uh, the the lunch crowd to the evening crowd and all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're kind of in the middle of that transition and all of a sudden the lights get dimmer and you notice it. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't the lights just get dimmer? Yeah. Hey, with Lego, yeah. Yeah, you're like, hmm. Because you, you, you feel kind of off balance at first, like, okay, am I tripping? No, you're not tripping. <laughs> it did get dimmer. And the same thing's going on with the world. It's happening right before your eyes, people. The world is waxing worse. In America, we are the cesspool of the world. Trust me. Everything, everything evil that we, everything evil for the for the amount of good that you think we do, we've imported evil all over all over the world, and America's going to pay for it. It's going to it's going to pay for it. Did you get to listen to Celeste at that first her, her prologue? No. Did yeah. you send me that? Yeah, I sent you her prologue. So yeah, her prologue, she talks about the fact that. That, that I agree with her on that. It's like, you know, the real the real deal. America has, has really been horrible to people since its inception, you know, and for the good that you think is done, it's done a lot of horrible things to a lot of people around the world. And we think that we're the, the center of the goodness of the world. And really, that is so arrogant with all the evil and all the things that we've done from the Indians to the to the Afri- Africans to I mean, to the to the South South Americans. You you find out you you see where we have colonized where Europe has colonized what they brought and again it doesn't take away from the the black on black crime that's in Africa and in this nation but again as a nation as a culture and it has nothing to do with necessarily color but as a culture we have we have we have just wrecked Christianity and again all you got to do is look at television the Joel Osteens and the rest of them of the world. The, those who y'all go to, y'all think they're saying something. They ain't, they ain't teach you. Nothing. But even Joel Osteen then told you he ain't no pastor. He said, uh, you know, I'm just a motivational speaker by his own admission. But you guys made him a pastor. What does that go with? The Bible says that you guys are going to raise up teachers that tickle your ears. And you have. And you don't care because he makes you feel good. 
<laughs> but remember this, you're going to feel good for a season while you're here. But where are you going to be in eternity? Because you never dealt with your sin. You never, you never, you never, you, you never ever admitted that you was a sinner and you needed a savior. You just want to bellhop Jesus. And that's what you, you, you'll get what you get. Either his will will be done or your will will be done. You, you, you don't make a difference. Do his will will be done and you submit to his will. It has a consequence. And submitting to your own will, let your own will be done. And he will allow you to do that has a consequence. But guess what? He's already told you what the consequences are for both. He's already told you. And it's really that simple. He said, even he does do good things for each other. So don't, don't tell him about your philanthropic ideas. It's how you handle Jesus. And how you handle Jesus' people and how you handle his word. Do you handle like peanut butter or do you handle like the sword that it's supposed to do? Be? The two-edged sword cutting. Forget that part. It's supposed to cut. Cut before you build up. Well, let me not go into a Bible study lesson right now. So yeah, I think you already are, did. Are you uh, cut everybody up. Uh, yeah, because you uh, chopped everybody up in little pieces, and then you served it back to him. Say here. <laughs> well, you silly. You silly. <laughs> so 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 uh, 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 so you're gonna put this out on your podcast, other than yeah, but I, I, yeah, I will, Wait. and then I'll, I'll give it. I'll I'll send it to you too because I gotta send it to you. But I before you go, because you know how we always do. Uh, I'm right. going to go ahead and do what you're going to do. Oh, well, you can catch me at, uh, and thank you for those who have come over. Some people I know have come over from Wisdom and started following me on my Facebook page and my YouTube page and my Instagram page. Uh, it's uh, Walk in Truth. Not walking, Walk in Truth Radio Network on YouTube. Uh, and I do, you see all the Bible study lessons of our church and you'll see encouraging words that I do every week. You can go down in the shorts. The shorts contain one minute encouraging words and, I, and that's there. And uh, and you get the same thing on my personal Facebook page, James Sutton II, or the Walk in Truth Radio Network uh, Facebook page, or the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church Facebook page. And the Instagram page is Walk underscore in truth dr james sutton and i you know i i, I forget what my twitter page is i don't even know what my twitter page is what's my twitter dr james sutton <laughs> you know <laughs> so you can find me I, and then then the, then the podcast that's on all the spotify and all the other podcast platforms is walking truth radio network so uh, same name you can find us anywhere put it in your uh, search engine and you should be able to find us everywhere and uh you will get a consistent uh, barrage of, of good stuff and uh, things that I think about and talk about. Um, I think I, I think we I think T we're gonna Friday record Monday morning conversation. We'll find something else to talk about. Okay. Maybe Friday morning conversation. We normally do that, so you can find me there at Walking Truth Radio Network. Uh, and and um, let me see. That's it for me. I mean, that's no, it's not. Find me that's at. not it. What what's that? What else? You always ha- you also I'll do have tag. What? No, no, don't you do your no, tag yet. No. No. No, no, no. You're blanket this blanket St. Louis with the gospel. Oh, yeah, we've been doing the blanket drive of uh, uh blanketing St. Louis with the gospel. Uh our theme this year is to get out and go. Uh we've been getting out and go. We have a uh ministry called Walk Up Prayer where we basically just post up in a park off a walking trail and let people come over and receive prayer. We don't ask them to join our church. We just showcase Jesus. If they want to know about the church, we tell them, but we just sit there and talk to people as they come by. That's been a real uh, intimate and I would say successful because it's teaching the others how to talk to people about their faith. So yeah, walk a prayer, something that we've been doing. Uh, and uh, yeah, Blanket St. Louis. Anything else I, I'm doing that I forgot? Yeah, uh, you Bible forgot studies. your cash app about that. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, my cash but, yeah, app but I'm, is. I'm gonna share. Well, hold on, hang on, one second, Pastor Jay. I just want to share about that. Uh, all the ministries that Pastor Jay does, 
they are always phenomenal and I've always gotten a lot of stuff for him and this last one that he did with the blanket the gospel uh, in St. Louis I know I participated just to share because there are homeless people everywhere and I wish I could do a lot for for everyone but I can't so even me helping in that regard I'm helping my brother in Christ to do so I already sent him blankets as well for him to do that and when I do out here with the homeless people I do what I can to support those that I see in need but if you would like to help him uh, you don't have to send a whole bunch of blankets. You don't even have to send him the money. The cash app is just if you want to be convenient. But if you would like to, he does have a link that he could probably put on Facebook or somewhere if you've been following him so that you could get it off Amazon and share it. Uh, I just think that it's a, it's a beautiful thing to do. Give someone something that's going to warm them as well as be warming their soul and giving them a place of eternal security, uh, which Pastor Jay is doing. So if you would like to help him as he continues to do that, uh, do this ministry because this is fairly new uh, so no pressure but if if it if you're led to do that just know you can either do the cash app which he's going to give you or you can uh, follow the amazon that it'll have a link somewhere um, to share with you what right. what type of blankets they're doing so uh, sorry i interrupted you pastor Jay. that's all that's all right you do a better commercial than i do for myself um <laughs> if you want to if you like you know um you can look in there at the bottom of our YouTube video and the contact information has all that Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. But our Cash App, you know, uh, if you're not a contact, it may not come up, but you can you can put in the number 314-629-0024 at the top of your Cash App search. And it, sh it should come up, dollar sign W-I-T-C-F-C. That's Walking True Christian Fellowship Church. And you can send your cash app there and it's tax deductible. We are 5013C. So, you know, you talk to your 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 tax professional about that. And um, like I said, like T said, we've been we, we started that with the, the cold blast that we had here. It really touched my heart as I sat here in my warm house and there were people on the streets when it's below zero here in St. Louis. And they, you know, I thought about them freezing to death on the streets. And I said, well, you know, it'd be nice if we can get blankets. So we did a blanket drive. And again, uh, we will always be willing to accept blankets. The blankets are, you know, I'm going to say only $17 a piece that we're getting. And, you know, any amount of money we use for that. Uh, 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 our ministry, the way we have our ministry, uh, we use our money for ministry. Um, we're very lean and, and it allows us to do ministry with our money. Uh, I personally do not take a salary of any kind, any, any, any way that you guys and some of your churches do certain things that when they get a pastor money, that is not our church. We don't, they don't do that. Um, and, um, and, uh, we just do good with our money. We're a teaching ministry. We give out a lot of Bibles. We give out a lot of teaching material, uh, free of charge, uh, to people who need it. Uh, we have a church in Africa, uh, in Bagoma, Kenya. Uh, Pastor Timothy, too, we support uh, our sister church is the Misfits for Jesus out in Warrington, Missouri, uh, and we support them when we can, and we just do what we can do. You know, uh, my goal is to uh, blanket the, the, you know, I don't think we need, and my mission is we don't need any more preaching per se, but we need better teaching, expositional teaching of the word of God, line by line and verse by verse, and uh, proper uh, exegesis of the scripture uh, to get the most out of the Bible that we can. Uh, and that's what we do. We teach line by line. So when you come to our, our YouTube page, uh, we're in a book and we go through a whole book. I mean, we've been through several books, but if you go to our playlist and look up Bible study, we've been, I mean, we've been through so many books now. It's, I used to could just rattle them off, but yeah. And then we have some great teachers, you know, sister Venus, sister, uh, sister, Dr. Brown, myself and others, uh, brother Kevin and brother, uh, sister Alicia, uh, we're, we're teaching the word of God and, 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 it, and, and we see getting the word of God out in its truth really helps a lot of people. So, uh, again, you know, if you donate, fine. If you don't just come and listen, uh, check out the, again, Walker Truth Radio Network, YouTube, check out encouraging words and stuff like that. And, uh, everything that's on the podcast platform is on all the other platforms. So wherever you decide to listen, uh, we appreciate it. And definitely give it a thumbs up and a follow, you know, the algorithm is full of trash. As me, you know, <laughs> trash. You know, I, you know, I'm yeah. not going to get into sensationalism. I'm not going to get in <laughs> the beef sector. I'm not going to get in to, to the bashing. I'm not doing that just for clicks and views. 
I will grow our channel organically and it will be to the glory of God. So whether, you know, I got 4,000 some followers, on, you know, but it took all these years to do that on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But on YouTube, you know, it's going slow and I don't care about it going slow. You know, I I want you to be a, a person who wants to come over and, and, and really enjoy the content that we do and me and T both do, you know, but it's not about um, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to monetize and get, you know, that kind of thing. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to do a product that my granddaughter could be proud of that once I go and leave this earth, she can go on the YouTube and be able to uh, hear her pawpaw uh, do some good stuff. You know what I'm saying? The stuff that lasts forever, you know, so uh, that's what I do. So, yeah, you can follow me there. So thank you, T, for the endorsement. I really appreciate that. And let me tell you about Tanika. She, <laughs> uh, podcasting godmother, she's the one who taught me all this, taught me all this. You know, she taught me podcasting six years ago and and, and, and a lot of things happened in those six years, but we were poised as a church and as a ministry for the pandemic. So when it hit us, I was not one of those pastors who need a crowd in front of me. Just give me a mic and I can go. I can do what I need to do. I can teach what I need to teach because thank God to Tanika, she got me used to social media. She got me used to podcasting. So now it's like the reason I have all these channels and again, kicking and screaming. She <laughs> drove me up. She drove me through this. <laughs> and now I've become very proficient at at it. What I do, I'm very proficient at outros, intros, e even the uh, the fading in and fading out from segment to segment. I, I figured that out the other day. So, you know, just playing with the technology and and it's a great thing. And uh, she taught me all that. And you know, I would tell you, you know, if, if you really want to learn podcasting and social media, uh, get in touch with her. You know, and it's not free. There was a time that we did this for free. It's not free anymore. I mean, because we've made all the mistakes that we can keep you from making. You know, and it's not expensive either. We're not charging no ungodly amount of money. We, but we want, but you should pay for your education. So if there's something that you want to do with podcasting, please get in touch with her. You know, she has a book and all that other good stuff, and she'll tell you all about that. But as far as teaching me and, and, uh, and us coming together six years, you know, uh, this month actually. Um, it was a real date and uh, we've been rolling strong ever since and become friends and all of that stuff so uh, we live in two different parts of the United States but again mm -hmm. there's nothing there's nothing better than my friend T. Drake I love her I thank God for her she's a good sister in Christ and again I've never seen a person who cares about people as much as she has and has conquered as many things as she has when you guys hear her story you only getting like a tenth of her conquering. This woman has done some things that are amazing. And I have learned some things about domestic violence and things like that and become more sensitive to it because of her. And like I say, uh, just, she's just, man, she's awesome. So, all right, T, that's enough. What, come on, what you, what, what, what else you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I I love that. You know, I went on. Uh, you know, I went on on the TV the other day on Roku. I tried to go find our series. I couldn't get it up on promote her TV. I don't even know oh, what happened okay. to it. Is she still there? But I don't know. That's what I was saying because I I was trying to. I tried to. I the app is there, right? But I tried to get it up to open up. It wouldn't open, so I I don't. I'm not sure. But at least thankfully that I had downloaded those and recorded them, that they're out there so that I could pull them back up. But I was like, how come they disappeared? And I don't know, maybe maybe it was frozen. I don't know. I'm going to try again today to see. But I could get it up. And you can get it on your phone, too, with the app, the Roku app. I couldn't right. get it up. So I, I'm not sure. Oh. But yeah, because oh, okay. we did that too, right. you know, having a little TV series. But yeah, I just wanted to share that about what you're doing. So thank you all for uh, tuning in. Uh, Pastor Jay and I, like he said, we have been rolling together for six years. I can't even believe I've been a friend right. to this man for this long. How how he just dragged me along doing all kind of stuff. I want to sound like him, but uh, it's, uh, been, it's been it's been it's been it's been a great a great time and i thank you guys for tuning in with us and hopefully one day we will do another event that pastor jay was so 
gracious enough to help me with this whole call podcast explosion that I talk about here and there. Uh, that was amazing. That was a hundred percent amazing. And uh, he really believed in me. And this is a man that teaches you the Bible word line by line, verse by verse. He's also very good in business. He's also very good in being strategic about when you do stuff in your careers. This man is not just, he should be called a guru. He doesn't call himself that. But if you need wise counsel, this would be the amount to get wise counsel from, especially him being on wisdom. You'll get some wise counsel. So uh, he's been just a very dear friend of me and I love him just as much. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm going to stop gushing on you. Enough of that sensitive stuff. It's, you know, right, I don't want to be on right. my feelings, you know, enough of that. Let's knock that right. out. So, <laughs> so uh, did you want to say your tag or did you want me yeah, to I, say it after yeah, you? Say and... my, okay. Say I guess get over with you know you guys i thank you guys for coming in like she said and taking your time to listen to us it's very important and i thank you again you so great you're great people if you stayed on here to listen to us talk this is how we talk normally so you know we're not giving you any showy talk this is how we talk uh and my tag is i always want you to be encouraged blessed and at peace and always remember walk in truth and and i love you guys with the love of lord jesus christ a big kiss for me to you Remember to be blessed, motivated, and always inspired to do what the Lord lays on your heart. All right, All right Pastor see you Jay. Later. All Bye, right. y'all. Thank you for listening to the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. If this message has been a blessing to you, consider donating on your favorite platform. You can donate by looking in the description box and picking your favorite platform of choice, Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. Continue listening. And your prayers are needed, welcomed and appreciated.